What is a minimalist essential? Well, by definition, an essential is a thing that is absolutely necessary. But here's the catch. One of the principles of minimalism means that it's up to each of us to define what is essential to us. Therefore, what I might feel is an absolute essential might seem unnecessary or downright frivolous to someone else. And I have the perfect example to illustrate my point. Now, in a previous video where I talked about how we got rid of almost all of our stuff, I mentioned that we sold both of our cars. And in that video, I got criticized by a woman who commented that we couldn't be frugal or minimalist because of the fact that we had two cars. And from her standpoint, as a single person living in a major European city with an excellent public transportation system, yes, a car could be considered a non-essential item. However, compared to us, a family of four who at that time were living in American suburbia, in a place where the nearest grocery store was a good 20 minute drive with no walkable sidewalks or public transportation system to speak of, having two cars was absolutely necessary for us at the time. And what's funny now is that we're at the opposite end of the spectrum and we've been living in a major European city with a fantastic public transportation system. And so we've been car free for over a year now and we absolutely love it. So I think that just goes to show you that there's no one size fits all solution to defining what is or isn't essential in a person's life. And values and needs can change over time and therefore for, it stands to reason that the things that you need will also change along with them. Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Marissa and I'm the founder of A to Zen Life, a place where I share tips and ideas to help you simplify your life from A to Z. And I usually do this through the lens of minimalism. And that's why today I thought it would be fun to share 25 of my top minimalist essentials, which are things that I still own or buy as a minimalist. But before we dive in, I would love to have you comment down below and share with me one or a few of your minimalist essentials, because I always love to hear the ideas and stories that other people have about what brings value and joy to their lives. As for me, I've broken up this list into five parts. First, we have wardrobe essentials, followed by home essentials, kitchen essentials, money and productivity essentials, and finally, family essentials. I will put timestamps down in the description box below, so feel free to skip around if there's a particular category that you feel drawn to. And on that note, let's dive in. The first item that we have in our minimalist wardrobe essentials list is a basic sewing kit. And this doesn't have to be anything fancy, but as a minimalist, I really find a lot of value in being able to make basic mends to make my clothes and my children's clothes last longer. So for me, that means having a small lunchbox that I have filled with things like needles and threads, a little tomato to hold my pins, some measuring tape, I also have a thimble and a seam ripper, and as well as some other things like maybe some extra buttons or whatnot. The next wardrobe essential is laundry bags, and I use these to also help extend the lifespan of our clothing. If we have any delicates, we will definitely put them inside the laundry bags before we wash them so that they are more protective as they go through the cycle, because I've really been finding that these high efficiency laundry machines that we have in Germany are a lot rougher on our clothes versus when we lived in the US. And they also come in really handy if you're traveling because you can use them to keep your dirty clothes inside while you're traveling to keep it kind of separate. And speaking of our washing machine, we also do not dry our clothes in a clothing dryer. We choose to line dry our clothes. And so that's the next minimalist wardrobe essential that also helps preserve our clothing and makes them last longer. We hang our clothes out to dry. In the summer, it's a lot easier because it's warmer. So usually things will dry overnight, but in the winter, it does take a little bit more planning ahead. So now that the weather is cold, I will find sometimes that it takes maybe two days or so to dry out. So I do need to stay ahead of the laundry, but I've never been in a situation where we have been out of clothes and didn't have anything to wear and my kids had to go to school with no pants or anything. I totally thought I was someone who could never live without a clothes drying machine, but actually now I really find that I enjoy the laundry process and I actually like hanging the clothes up to dry. I like the smell that it brings. Usually I have it back here behind me in my office and the smell of freshly laundered clothing really just kind of fills up the room. I love that smell. Next on this list is a cozy bathrobe. And this is something that, especially in the winter, is really unessential for me because I am always 
freezing in the winter and I love wrapping myself up in my terry cloth bathrobe. I even wear it some days on top of my clothing because we live in a 100 year old European home and the insulation and the heating systems are not that up to date. Very, very expensive if you want to keep the rooms, especially with the high ceilings, warm all the time. So instead of turning up the heat, what I do is I just put on my bathrobe. I'm the cold one in the family. Everyone else is fine. So it's just me that needs to do it. And I have had my robe for over 12 years now. I actually got it when I got married. I got all of the bridesmaids plus myself matching bathrobes. I had theirs monogrammed. I didn't monogram mine, but it is one of my absolute favorite things and a must have around my home. And finally on this list, we have velvet hangers. And velvet hangers not only help your clothes from slipping off and falling into piles at the bottom of your closet or wardrobe, but they're also thinner, which means that they don't take up so much space. And that gives your clothes a lot more breathing room inside of your closet. When we first moved here, my husband just grabbed a bunch of cheap Ikea wood hangers. And after we unboxed them, I realized that when I was touching them, they were so rough. Literally, I could feel that they were going to rub holes in the shoulders of our clothes. So these velvet hangers are a lot more caring. It's like giving your clothes a nice hug after a long day of being on your body. When you treat the things that you own with respect, you'll find that they last a lot longer. And by the way, I will make sure to link any of the products that I mentioned if they're available down in the description box below for you to check out if you feel like it might be something that you're interested in. On to minimalist home essentials. The first minimalist home essential is good lighting. Having good lighting in your home is something that feels absolutely priceless. We actually have excellent natural lighting in this home, but we found that especially in the winter, at night when we try to stay up together, my husband and I visiting after the kids have gone to to bed. It really does get quite dark, particularly in the living room. So we did need to buy a chandelier light for that particular room. I really like the modern feel of it and it helps illuminate the far corners so that if I want to read a book at night, I am still able to see to do so. So good lighting is an absolute must have in our minimalist home. The next minimalist home essential is a good vacuum cleaner. In the US, we had a very large Dyson, which was very good to have there, and we had closets to put it in, but now we live in a 100-year-old home and it doesn't have any closets or storage spaces built in, so we have a smaller, more compact vacuum cleaner that we have stored away in the kitchen in a Ikea Billy bookshelf. Here in Germany, all of the playgrounds have sand. That is something that was really a, a culture shock when we moved here. So we found that the boys are coming home almost every day from school with buckets of sand in their shoes and we have to dump it out at the door. I go and wash their feet and then my husband goes to vacuum it up. So having a good vacuum cleaner really is essential for keeping the floors of our home clean. And something else that helps keep the floors of our home clean is the fact that we wear indoor slippers. So my husband is Chinese and in Asian cultures, it's very common for everyone to remove their shoes when they come into the home. And in fact, it would be really weird and borderline insulting if you went into an Asian home and you didn't remove your shoes. They also will make sure to have indoor slippers for guests to wear so that they're still able to wear something and be comfortable in the home. And so when I met my husband, he really got me on board with this idea of taking your shoes off and leaving them at the door and wearing either indoor slippers or indoor socks. In the winter I wear, I like to wear fuzzy socks too. Sometimes I layer both. As someone who didn't grow up taking off of their shoes, before coming into the home, now I cringe to think back about how much dirt and grunge and goop we probably tracked into the home. So if you're not someone who has tried wearing indoor slippers or going shoe free in your home, I encourage you to try it. And I have an entire blog post on this topic that I will also make sure to link down in the description box below. The next item on this list is my rolling cart. And I love this thing because like I said, we are now a car free family and living in a major European city means that I have multiple grocery stores within walking distance, but I still shop like an American, which means that I have a lot of stuff that I need to carry. So having a rolling cart to help me go grocery shopping has really been a lifesaver in preserving literally my poor breaking back and just also makes it much easier and more efficient for me to go shopping near or far by myself. Even if I have to go up and down stairs to enter or exit the home, which I do, life-changing. 
And the final item on this list is plants. And my husband deserves 100% credit for this because I am a serial plant killer. I cannot keep plants alive for the life of me, but my husband has managed to nurture an olive tree, a jade plant, and some other kind of leafy plant that I don't even know what it is. But these are two plants that were given to him by my mother-in-law. And the jade plant was like on the verge of dying. I didn't even want to videotape it. It was that sad. It got root rot and my husband resuscitated it from near death. I really do think that there is a lot to be said for having green and living plants in a space, especially during the winter when there is like no green to be seen. So kudos to him. On to minimalist kitchen essentials. So the first item on this list is good knives. I actually have my father's set of Cutco knives that I inherited from him when he passed away. And I think that those are now like over 20 years old and they've lasted this long. And then we have a general chef's knife that we use for chopping and also a particular bone knife that we use to cut things like when I make chicken noodle soup. Having a selection of good, sharp, reliable, sturdy knives is really essential in helping me prepare healthy meals at home for my family. And speaking of prepping meals at home for my family, something else that I found very useful is an apron. Now this is something that I recently purchased along with my minimalist summer capsule wardrobe linen pieces. And I have to say, I really, really love this one. I've had aprons in the past that weren't so good. I felt like they weren't covering me far enough. When I selected this item, I made sure that it goes very, very high to protect me from splatters up here. It's quite long, it's easy to put on and take off, and also it has two really deep pockets. I actually had them add a second pocket uh, because the original one just had one. It's from an ethical linen shop on Etsy because I felt like it was really essential for me to have two deep pockets. And I'll find that sometimes I won't just wear it in the kitchen when I'm preparing things like pasta and pizza, but also when I'm walking around, it's easy to pick things up that I see lying around and stick them in my pockets and then take them and put them away in the rest of the home. So it's really good for tidying up too. The next item on this list is meal prep containers. We have tried so many different kinds of meal prep containers and I used to give my kids nicer meal prep containers, but I found that when they were younger, they would sometimes lose them at school. So then we switched for them to plastic meal prep containers, which are also a little bit lighter. And so that's easier for them to carry with them. And then the glass meal prep containers are better for things like if I'm preparing ahead meals or if we have leftovers and just a little bit of things here and there, I can separate them into the different compartments and they don't touch. And something else that I've also talked about is how I like to store my meal prep containers vertically in the drawer and I feel that that helps save on space and then you can easily see everything that's inside. Next up we have a water filter and the water filter that we have is the Brita Maxtra, I believe it's called, and it removes things like lead, copper, and mercury chemicals like chlorine and pesticides, and organic compounds that can affect the taste and smell of the water. And we've also found that the water is really, really hard and has a lot of hard minerals here in Berlin. So having a Brita water filter has helped us reduce the carbonate hardness and lime scale. And so that also helps extend the lifespan of our appliances that require water in it, like our rice cooker or our coffee machine, which happens to be the next item on this list. Coffee is an absolute essential for both my husband and myself, but we found that we don't really care for the pour over coffee method. I know there's a lot of minimalists that swear by that, but we have a, I believe, Philips standing coffee machine and it stays on our counter at all times. I actually really like the way that it looks sitting on our counter. We don't put our coffee machine away after every use and making coffee in the morning is really a nice part of our daily routine and it's become a ritual for my husband and myself to sit down and enjoy a coffee together with our breakfast. It's something that I look forward to every morning. On to minimalist money and productivity essentials. And the first item on this list isn't really a thing at all, but it's more of a habit. And that's the habit of intentional shopping. And I think that there's a quote that really explains why it's so important to know what your values are when it comes to spending money. And so for us, we've really tried to make intentional shopping a habit where we look at an item and really think about what value does it contribute to our lives 
before we go through and make that purchase. And I can link a video up here that talks more about how to implement intentional shopping in your life, but basically just aligning our values and our core beliefs with how we spend our money has made a big difference in the amount of money that we save as well as how much excess stuff comes into our home. And that brings us to the next item on this list, which is a minimalist budget system. As not only a minimalist, but also a financial minimalist, I believe it is so, so essential to track every expense that you incur on a daily basis and try to stick to a budget that you've created. I keep my minimalist budgeting system in my office close to my desk so that I can easily access it when I'm tracking the receipts and spending and going through the bills and payments and whatnot. And also I have a free two page budget planner that I can link down below for you to check out if this is something that you would be interested in if you need help with saving more money. Now is a great time to start thinking about your budget because it can help you save money when you're buying gifts for the holidays, and it can also help you with your financial goals for the new year that's coming up. It's crazy to think that the year is almost over, isn't it? Next on this list, we have my smartphone, and my smartphone has helped me cut back on having so much excess stuff because it really is kind of like a hub for a lot of the things that I need to do. Like I don't need to own an alarm clock because I have an alarm clock built into my phone. My smartphone also serves as an easy camera that I always have with me if I want to take pictures of my kids or record something for my YouTube channel. It helps me keep track of my schedule and plan out our appointments. I listen to inspiring podcasts on Apple Podcasts. I also enjoy listening to lo-fi playlists on Spotify when I'm cleaning or tidying up. This little baby has really helped me streamline my productivity and help Help me reduce the amount of physical items that I need to own and use throughout the day. The next item on this list is my Rascog IKEA rolling cart. And this rolling cart lives next to my desk and it's where I store some of my budgeting supplies, notebooks that I need to refer to for certain things, as well as items that I need when I'm filming, like extra lenses, as well as my kids' iPads and some other technical items that we have. The next item is an external hard drive. And this is something that's become even more important as a YouTuber here, because I find that all of the videos that I'm taking really would fill up my computer space very, very fast. So having a good external hard drive that's small and compact, but still has a lot of storage is something that's really important for me to help us not only be able to preserve our family memories and photos and videos of our time together, but also have access to the files that I need quickly and easily in a storage unit to help me do the work that I need as a YouTuber here. And finally, we have a command center. My command center is located over my desk and it's kind of a command center slash vision board. And it's where I do all of my planning, all of the budgeting for the family. The way I have it set up is basically as a metal grid and it has clips and hooks that I can hang things from as well as a shelf on which I have my 100K YouTuber subscribers plaque. And if there's anything that I need to remember that's a little bit out of the ordinary, I'll also put it on there right in my face so that I don't forget it because I am definitely someone who benefits from having a visual reminder right there in my in front of my face so I don't forget things and I've seen so many different interpretations of command centers both for single people and for families you can have wood command centers metal grid command centers like I have you can have them in the kitchen you can have them in the entryway so there's a lot of different ways that you can set up a command center and the most important thing is to choose one that fits your lifestyle and finally, the last category on this list is minimalist family essentials. And first up, we have the white noise machine. And this is something that I have had since my kids were baby babies. We've almost always lived in a big city. And when Guga was born, we were living in Chicago and very, very close to Wrigley Field. And if you've never been close to Wrigley Field before, not only are there sometimes late night baseball games, but they would also host concerts at Wrigley Field. And the nights that they did those, it was so, so loud. We could hear it from our bedroom. So I got this white noise machine. It's called the, the electro fan and it has 10 white noise settings and 10 fan noise settings. I personally prefer the fan noises. And that little white noise machine has gone with us so many places and gotten us through so many loud, loud nights. We made it through World Cup celebrations in Berlin. It helped us sleep through Chinese New Year celebrations when we were living in Shanghai, China. And it also helped us 
stay sane and sleep when we had an upstairs neighbor who would walk around all hours of the night, even at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and be stomping above our heads, it just helped give us a little bit more peace and quiet. And the next thing is fuzzy blankets. And just blankets in general are a great thing for families to have. You can make forts out of them. My kids like to wrap themselves up like burritos and crawl around on the floor like little sandworms from Dune. And they also help keep you warm, obviously, in the winter when you need to bundle up. So. Fuzzy blankets are just one of those things that are so, so simple and yet add so much value to our life and are really so multi-purpose and versatile. And along with that, something else that is very versatile and helpful for us is having baskets and boxes as a family. So having baskets and boxes helps make it easy for us to quickly pick things up and put them away. Even if they're not put away so beautifully, at least we can quickly get it out of sight, out of mind. We have them in the entryway to store our scarves and our hats and gloves in the winter. We have them in the boys' room. They have the Ikea Trofast where they can quickly throw their toys inside and tidy up themselves. I really like wood bowls. A lot of the bowls that you see throughout our house are bowls that I have thrifted that I now use in various places to help us contain visual clutter on flat surfaces. And then baskets, I really like baskets made out of rattan or seagrass and they just look really, really nice and help us store things like our toilet paper in the bathroom, for example. And I don't recommend any particular brand, just go with what you like, but just having baskets and boxes strategically around your home can really help contain the mess and keep things tidy. Now, as a minimalist family, we also appreciate having games and board games around our home. So the games that we have, we have a memory game that is actually from the time when we lived in Shanghai, China. I got it as a souvenir, and it's something that we still love to play together to this day. It's one of our favorites. We also have Connect Four. We really got big into chess when the 2020 lockdowns were happening. And we have a train game that's called, I think in English it's called Ticket to Ride, but here it's Suk Um Suk. But just basically as a minimalist family, we still like to play games. We just have a select few favorites. It gives us something to do, especially during the winter when we're stuck at home a lot. And the final item on this list is a simple set of coasters. So we have a wood table and I did use tongue oil on the table to help finish it because it came unfinished but still, even with that protection, it could get stained if there was something to spill on it. So we have a simple set of felt coasters that came in a little bamboo stand, and my kids will use it when they're having milk with their breakfast in the morning, or if we have guests over and they're drinking coffee or wine, we just set it out, and that really helps keep our surfaces, like our wood table and our granite surfaces, nice and clean and stain free. So that is something that is so cheap and so simple and yet has really contributed a lot of value to our life. Obviously this list is by no means complete and there are a lot of other things that I love and value having in my home, but I thought that we could leave that there for today. And I've also spoken at length about things that I don't buy as a minimalist. And in fact, if you're interested in knowing more about this, you can go check out last week's video where I shared seven purchases that I thought would make me happy, but did not. And some of them were expensive too. Or until next week, I'll see you then. Take care, bye-bye.